This first example of dynamic EQ really defines why we would use it at all. Keep an eye on the 100 hertz range down here as I play this guitar and pay particular attention to the difference between the first and second chords. So with the second chord there, we saw a massive spike at around about 100 hertz. And what was warmth for the first chord becomes boominess for the second chord. And the word I want you to remember here is inconsistency. If this frequency was consistently out of control, then we could just make a regular EQ move and suppress those frequencies by dragging the band down like so. However, we've got an inconsistent performance here, so that's when I'd reach for dynamic EQ. Now with this particular plugin from AIX DSP, simply called Dynamic EQ, the dynamic controls are on display the whole time. We simply select our band and then turn them on using the power switch here. Now by default, it's set to compression, which is the type of dynamic control you get with most other plugins. But with this, with this particular one, we do have some other choices which we'll take a quick look at later on. Now, in order for things to happen, I'm going to need to do some basic settings. The first one I'm going to change is the ratio. And I'm going to push it up pretty high because there was really quite a spike there. So I want a lot of gain reduction for that frequency range. So I'm just going to push it all the way up here. The other thing I'm going to need to set at least is the threshold control. It's set to 0 dB at the moment. So unless anything reaches is that that level nothing's going to happen so i need to push it down to a point where we're going to affect the second chord but not the first chord now i've experimented earlier to save you time and i know around about seven minus 17 db is about right now the other thing i'm going to quickly do because i've got control of it here with this plugin is grab the attack control and drag it all the way down so i'm getting an immediate reaction to that big transient for that second chord so let's play our performance again and see what's happening. So again, for the first chord, nothing was happening. We kept everything intact. But for the second chord, we had quite a lot of gain reduction for that frequency range. Let's have another look. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I'm going to be showing you another four tricks for dynamic EQ in this video. However, before I do, I quickly wanted to mention that the particular plugin I'm using to demonstrate these from AIX DSP is currently on sale at the moment. It normally costs around about $150 or so, but it's on sale for $59.99. Plus, if you look in the description down below, I've got an exclusive discount code that you can apply on top of that sale price. So definitely worth checking out and by the way one of the tricks I'm going to show you is going to use a feature on this plugin that you don't necessarily see on other plugins we'll check out that later but let's dive in and look at the others in this second example we've still got inconsistency but this time it's in the form of sibilance sibilance being that s and t sounds on a vocal which can be harsh and annoying. Now I'm sure many of you are thinking, well, you would just use a de-esser for that, and sometimes you may even use several de-essers. But I'm going to make a case here for using dynamic EQ. But first of all, let's look at the basics of what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be working on this vocal. Was it the way that I dared to love? So you can hear the S and the T gets out of control there. Let's have a listen to it in solo. Was it the way that I dared to love? Now I've done a little bit of setup for this already to save you time. And if we look at band number six here, I've got its frequency set to around about 8,000 hertz. That was the first place where I thought there was a problem. Now I sort of found that by using the solo feature that we have on this plugin where we can just isolate a particular band and listen to it like so. And that's where I felt things were getting out of control, kind of. 
We'll talk about that later. So let's switch on the settings I had for that band and have a listen and a look to what's happening. Was it the way that I did to love? So you can see I've got a lot of gain reduction in that area. Now that was my first problematic area because you'll find when you use DSing that you often get more than one problematic area, which is why many people use more than one DSer. But here I can do it in the one plugin. And I've got another band set up here at around about 4.8 kilohertz. This is very a very, very typical area, in fact. And I've done some settings for that as well. So I'm going to switch that one on. So now we're working on two frequency ranges for the siblings. Have a listen now. Was it the way that I did to love? Now remember, we're not trying to kill these sounds, we're just trying to control them. In fact, if you do go as far as to kill them, it just makes the vocal sound really sort of weird, to be honest with you. Now, I've used two bands here to control siblings, but sometimes we also have plosive problems. Now, plosives are the sounds of the b and the sounds and particularly if someone's got too close to a microphone and sung directly into it they can be problematic and we would control those in exactly the same way but with a low frequency band and this is my case for a dynamic eq plugin for siblings first of all you can control several bands for siblings and plosives if required but also you get much more control over these bands than you do with most ds plugins staying with vocals this time we're going to use dynamic EQ to control the proximity effect. Now the proximity effect is the change in frequency response as a vocalist moves either further away or closer to a microphone and in particular we tend to notice a low frequency boost as we move closer to a microphone. Now this could occur because the vocalist is moving around while they're performing or it could be because we have separate takes taken at different times and there's a slight difference between the distance of one take to another. Now in this example I'm using a spoken word example and you can see in blue here the areas where I was further away from the microphone and in green where I was closer Closer. Let's have a listen and a look. At the moment, I'm quite far away from the microphone, but now I'm much, much closer, and you can hear a lot more low end information. Again, when I'm further away, there's a lot less low end information. So we can definitely hear again inconsistency here. So what I did here was I set up some dynamic EQ again down in the low end of this vocal at around about 100. I could focus on more than one area if I needed to, but with this simple example, I'm at around about 100 hertz or so. I'll switch on that dynamic EQ band. I've really pushed the ratio up to maximum here, so I'm getting the sort of maximum gain reduction I can get. I've set my threshold, it's around about 20 dB. I would, of course, play it with that. And I've got a reasonably sort of wide Q at the moment, but I could adjust that. Let's have a listen to the difference now. At the moment, I'm quite far away from the microphone, but now I'm much, much closer, and you can hear a lot more low-end information. Again, when I'm further away, there's a lot less low-end information. So it's not that it's not reacting at all with the first and the third examples, it's just that it's reacting a lot more to the second example. And if you listen to that, I encourage you to rewind a bit and listen again, then you'll hear that it sounds much more consistent. On this occasion, we're going to be using dynamic EQ for some unmasking. Now, masking occurs when two instruments occupy similar frequency ranges and they're kind of cancelling each other out or one of them is not being allowed to shine. And particularly when this happens in the low end, you can end up with very muddy mixes. Now on this occasion, we're going to unmask a piano, which sounds like this by itself. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I imagine it's playing like that at the beginning of the song, but say later on, a bass guitar comes in. Now, when that bass guitar comes in together, they're going to sound like this. Now, you may think that sounds fine, you know, but in an, a dense mix where you've got a lot of things combating for those frequencies, as I say, it can end up very, very muddy. So what we want to do is kind of reduce those low frequencies in the piano when the bass comes in. And for that, we're going to use a feature of many dynamic EQ plugins, but particularly this one, it's called side chaining. Now to set up a side chain, what we need to do is do a send from our our bass guitar and you can see it here and it's going to our dynamic EQ plugin. Now exactly how you do this in your door is going to differ from mine but that's the basic setup and you'll need to find out exactly how to do it. Now we're sending a signal from the bass guitar to the dynamic EQ plugin on the piano. Why do we have the EQ plugin there? Because it's the piano that we're going to affect with the EQ. So I've got that set up and now I need to go to this first band of EQ here and switch it on. Now again, I've to save time for you, I've done the basic setup that I need to do. So let's play them both together and listen and look at what's happening. Now on this occasion, I've used a low shelf. You can see I've got that selected down here on the plugin. So it's really cutting out all of the low frequencies of the piano when the bass guitar plays. Now you may be thinking you can't really hear any difference. So what I'm actually gonna do is turn down the bass guitar. Now I've still got the send going and it's a pre-fader send, meaning that the fader doesn't affect what's being sent to the plugin. But now we're going to hear the effect of the bass guitar on the piano without hearing the bass guitar. So let's have a listen to the piano as it sounds before this setup, so I've bypassed the plugin. And now let's switch it on. You can hear there's a lot less low frequency information. As I say, in a mix, that's going to equate to a lot less muddiness. Now, as I mentioned earlier, our final trick includes using a feature which you don't necessarily find on other Dynamic EQ plugins. So make sure you do check out the link in the description down below and make use of that discount code before it runs out. So we've got a drum performance which includes a tom feel which sounds like this. Now, if I isolate the Tom mics, we can hear exactly what they're hearing. So as well as the toms, we're getting quite a lot of bleed from the cymbals, from the snare, from the hi-hat, and that may not be ideal. Ideally, we want to control those elements with their own faders on our console. So it would be nice to suppress those elements on the Tom recording. And as you may have guessed, I'm gonna use a dynamic EQ to do that. But instead of using compression this time, I'm going to use expansion. Now I've already got it set up on this second band here, so I'll switch it on. And as you can see in this plugin, I can choose from compression, downward expansion or upward expansion. So let's just do a quick lesson on the difference. Compression, actually reduces the dynamic range of our signal. In other words, it reduces the difference between the quiet parts and the loud parts. But with expansion, we expand the dynamic range. Now the difference between downward expansion and upward expansion is once the signal is below the threshold with downward expansion, it will make the quieter parts even more quiet. But with upward expansion, once it goes over the threshold, it will make the loud parts even more loud. That's the easiest way to think about it. On this occasion, I want to make the actual cymbals and the snare, etc., even more quiet than they currently are. So I've got it set up already with the correct ratio and threshold. Let's see what it's actually doing. 
Now, as you can see, rather than use a peak, I use the high shelf on this occasion. It's not completely gating out those other elements. I can find that a little bit harsh sometimes, but it is suppressing them significantly. However, when the toms play, that suppression kind of lifts, if you like, so we can still hear the high-end information of the toms, the sort of, not just that low boom, but those sort of click sounds on the tom. So let's have a listen to it quickly without this expansion on. And now with it on. So we can still hear our toms at the same volume. We've still got some high end frequency information in there for the toms when they're playing. But when they're not playing, we're suppressing all that high end frequency information. Now it's always very useful for me to know which parts of these videos you found helpful. So let me know in the comments down below. Don't be shy, say hi. Oh, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today. Check out the link in the description down below and I'll see you in the next video.